Welcome back to the podcast where we explore the creator economy and how you can succeed in it. Our guest today has over 170,000 followers on Instagram and is the vice president of marketing at Urban Legend. They also have an extensive experience in performance marketing, content creation, working with brands and building relationships with audiences. Paula Dyer, how are you? Welcome to the creator landscape. Hi, Jake. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm super excited to have you here today as, you know, one of the inaugural episodes for the creator landscape and to talk about the enormous thing that is the creator economy and oh, there's so many things that we can cover. But Paula, would you give us a little bit of insight into what you're currently doing in the space? Sure. Um, you know, what I'm doing compared to what I have done in the past is fascinating and different and very exciting. Um, I've, like you said, been in the world of influencers for quite some time. Um, and I'm now with a company called Urban Legend, who is focused on promoting causes and ideas and issues and not products. Could you give us an example of what an idea or a thought or a cause might be? Sure. We have uh, creators in all sorts of verticals. We have over 800 creators on our platform right now. And our issues range from everything from climate change and in people in the environmental space to mental health, um, to parenting, to, uh, you know, whatever it may be that um, needs to get an idea across. We have different action items that are associated with those ideas and causes. Um, it could be petition signatures. It could be clicks to an informative landing page. It could be letters to Congress or calls to Congress. So we are never asking the followers to spend money. We're only asking them to basically crowdsource change, which is a really cool thing for creators to do. I love that. That is actually really incredible. And I don't think I've really seen that kind of work being got that collaboration in the space much. So that's really cool. And how does someone get involved in that? So they can apply to join on our website. Um, we do heavily vet our creators before we invite them onto the platform. It is invite only. Um, but you know, if you're speaking authentically on causes that you really care about, if you're invested in an issue, um, and if you have a following that is engaged, then that's usually a, a good combination for someone that would work with us. Just sort of circling onto something that's related to this topic, it's, is this a form of almost affiliate marketing? It, you're, you're affiliating with the cause and then you're promoting it in a way, but is there any sort of, like, there's not really any monetization in that space. So can you still call it affiliate marketing? So I think um, I think affiliate marketing is is uh, has been a dirty word in the creator economy for a very long time, especially millennial creators. Mm -hmm. Of you know, hey, you'll get two cents if you promote this product and it sells. Uh, our platform works on a cost per action model. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, there's a range of action items that are very specific for our campaigns. So our creators know, okay, I'm driving my audience for X for petition signatures, for clicks to this website. So it's very clear what the action is and the cost per action. And what's great is they can see all of that happening as they post. So I think that a lot of our creators have been incredibly surprised as to the return on this cost per action or affiliate model. Um, sometimes they make more than they would on a flat fee post. So now that you're explaining it to me, it's just making so much more sense. And I don't know why affiliate marketing is actually such a, a dirty term. Like it, once the way you've explained, it makes it seem like, oh, you know, it, it's very useful. It, it can serve a really great purpose. It can be used in a really effective way. Treat everything and every experience and every interaction that you have with a brand or a company as an opportunity for you to understand a little bit more about the space so that you can continue to drive for yourself into that goal of yours, which is becoming a full-time content creator and earning, you know, a full-time wage. Exactly. So, Only 4% of content creators are professional. The other 96% will make an average of a thousand dollars. So while that's daunting, 
very daunting. Yeah. Um, and that was the report that Goldman Sachs just released on the creator economy. Mm -hmm. But while that's daunting, you have to treat this like a profession if you are going to become a professional content creator. And that starts with professional relationships. I'll never forget when I first started as a content creator, I got a partnership that I did not have the follower count to get, um, but it was relational. I reached out, I said, I loved the brand. I wanted to work with them. I got the partnership. And the day the partnership ended, I sent a six page report of everything, my analytics, the content, put it in a Dropbox link and sent it over. And the, res the response that I got from the brand was, we don't get this from followers, from creators that have millions of followers. And it was mind blowing that that was not standard. So how did that shape your perspective going forward, working with brands? It really was eye opening that a lot of creators are not treating this like a professional relationship, like a job. Mm -hmm. We had a partnership, they delivered on their side. I think creators need to realize that the delivery goes beyond the post. If you want this to be relational and not transactional, you have to keep going. You have to say, what else do you need from me? Here's the report. Here's all of my content. It's delivered nicely in a presentation. Thank you so much for working with me. I would love to work with you again. That is what has to exist for you to continue on. Um, a lot of brands want relational partnerships. You should want relational partnerships. What creators don't realize is that the contacts that you have with brands or with PR firms are not going to be at that brand or PR firm forever. They're going to move to new ones. They also have friends at other brands and other PR firms. So you can have a bad partnership that will spread like wildfire, or you can act professionally and deliver like no other creators delivered before. And that will also spread like wildfire. They will say, Hey, this creator was great to work with. You should work with her too. Or this creator made my life so easy. I had one brand say, we didn't have to touch your report. We sent it straight on to, mm -hmm. to our boss and she loved it. Um, I, in my PR kit on my second page is just feedback on me mm -hmm. as a creator that says, you know, my, my client never responds and I got an immediate response or like, this is perfect. You over delivered. So what would be a great checklist for a creator looking to work with a brand? What are like the three things that they should be doing to a high standard to build these relationships, really good relationships to have longevity with their content creation career. Just like I talked about seeding and talking about issues or causes that you really love and you want to talk about with Urban Legend, you should be doing the same with every partnership. This should not be, when you reach out to a brand or an organization or a company, this should not be the first time that you have used the product, talked about the issue. Um, if you're you know, doing, if you're a travel blogger, it sh shouldn't be the first time you've looked up the hotel. So it has to be a natural relationship. Going back to authenticity, it has to be authentic. Going to a brand and saying, I have 20 pairs of your jeans. I love them. It's the only brand I wear. This is a natural partnership. Here are photos, stories, content of me drinking this smoothie mix. Here, here's examples of me already seeding this into my followers. Um, and using this in an authentic way. I would love to work with you because I believe in your product. I know about your company. This is a natural partnership. I'm a natural super fan. Let me spread that message to my followers. It starts with that. Then it goes on to the actual partnership. Know your deliverables if you have them. You should be reading that campaign brief more than once. You should have the tags right. Know your hashtags. Know what time you're supposed to post if, again, if those things exist. Um, there shouldn't be any, any question as to what is needed out of you. If there is, go back to the brand and say, I want to firm this up before I actually go live with this. And then there's the follow-up process. Anything that they need from you and things they don't need from you. Usually, if they're asking for five images, I give them eight. 
Um, mm -hmm. If they are asking for certain analytics, I give them more. So make it pretty, make it professional and submit it in a timely manner. Don't make them chase you for the follow-up and then thank them for the partnerships. This was great. This is my feedback. I would love to work with you again. Remember their names, mm -hmm. remember their titles, check mm -hmm. in with them. Look on, you know, LinkedIn every once in a while, see if they've moved companies. Um, but you should, you should know the people that are in these industries and treat them like people. I'm in awe. They are some absolutely amazing tips to build really strong relationships with people, not just that are on the other side of these brands, but you could almost apply this to every relationship, you know, treat everyone like a person, you know, mm -hmm. so that's so important. And with that, just, you, you talked about presenting yourself to these brands and a really, you know, give them eight photos, give them everything they want. How should you package that? Is there a, a press kit that grabs attention, a certain style or a media kit, or do you just drop the, the in a Google drive? What's best practice there when, you know, presenting all of your, your information to the brand that you want to work with? When I submit wrap up reports, it very much is a presentation. It has their logo. It has all of the content that I've posted. Some of these brands shouldn't have to chase where you've posted the content. They're working with a lot of creators. They don't know if you post it on, on TikTok or Instagram sometimes. Show them, this is where I post it. This is the content. These are the analytics. If you can see it as a creator, they want to see it as a brand. Share that with them. Share the original content with them. If you need to download a TikTok, download a story, and then put that in a drive to then send to them, you don't know what part of your content they want. They might want, um, they might want it for a case study. They might want to repost it. Give them the ability to do that. And then again, a thank you. Would love to work with you in the future. If it's a brand you really want to work with in a lasting partnership, give them content ideas. I, you know, I'm putting together this gift guide. I'm traveling here. Would love to partner with you on packing. Um, give them thought for future partnerships. Do their job for them. They will appreciate it. Paula, what would you say your biggest learning experience has been inside the creator landscape? I, honestly, it's it's just been to be a real human. There's The creator landscape is huge. Mm -hmm. um, if you feel confident in speaking, then speak on stories, on TikTok, talk. If you know you are wanting these brand partnerships like I talked about, treat these people like people be relational and that's i think that that's probably that sums it up is to be relational be relational with your followers be relational with brands um it means to go beyond just you as a creator this is absolutely a economy built on relationships and the earlier you learn that the better you will do as a creator thank you so much for your insights into the creator landscape and Thank you to our creators and other creative professionals who may be listening to this podcast. If you guys have any questions you'd like answered or, you know, for the show, you can pop them in the discord for creator land. And uh, yeah, well, Paula, thank you. Once again, it's been enough. You've blown my mind. And if you've blown my mind, I'm sure you've blown the mind of our listeners as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone. I am on the discord as well. I'll see you all there. And thank you, Jake. I appreciate it.